So basically the origin of Zeotab is looking at telco data. If you think of a telco, they are usually three per market or two per market, depends on the life cycle of a market. They have verified data either from the ID card, right? If you purchase a price plan, you put your ID card, or it's verified by the network usage. So you have a lot of data in one, in one place. It's verified by nature, and it's available at scale if you think of combining telcos uh, across one market to achieve scale. So when we started the business three years ago, and I, I went to investors to ask them for money to fund this business, they said, Daniel, you will never make this. You will never convince a single big company to share data with your small company. And I said, yes, I will. And I even will be able to build a cross-carrier market across markets to achieve that scale. So three years later, we have like more than five telcos signed and the data being live in market, selling the data in market um, across Spain, Italy, India, and Canada. Um, and actually, what we have learned is that during that time, where we've built these assets, like pr strong privacy by design uh, approach, and very important, a commercial data protection mechanism to make sure that data never leaks to any buyer. Not only are telcos relevant for us, but also other industries that sit on huge amounts of gold. Here, that Google and Facebook make a lot of money with monetizing that data, but they don't know how to do it. How do I handle privacy? How do I handle data security? How do I actually go to the advertising? These folks out there have a very different DNA. So last year, we opened up and we started onboarding non-telco data, which complements our telco data graph and which adheres to the same quality standards as telco data. So there are different ways to make sure the data is anonymized. At the very minimum, you need to make sure that you comply to the uh, national regulation. That's nothing else than a pure, solid, thorough uh, legal check. So we work with leading um, uh, yeah, houses like Hogan Lovells, and they um, do in-depth research of our technology and give us like a 20-page paper which says exactly, for this data attribute in that market, you are allowed to do the following to comply with the national regulation. And then obviously those legal like um, provisions are translated into technology. So for example, the way how we integrate in the telco network we make sure that the PII information the telco has, like a phone number, which is connected to the data, is never in the same request than a device ID which we use for monetization and the data. So we sort of decouple the matching progress so that the sensitive IDs are never used outside the telco network and we never get touch in touch with it. We only map the data to non-sensitive device ID based, uh, like, um, yeah, like the device ID. Um, and then obviously we have a privacy council which gives us their reputation and their advice. Uh, we're part of industry organizations, we're part of the, privacy by uh, the, the Future Privacy Forum in Washington, sort of to engage in this privacy community and you know, be top of mind uh, and, and you know, ahead of all the developments. So what I like to say is that you win a deal for where the data is coming from for the source, but you maintain a deal with an agency only if the data delivers better results. So a lot of companies out there, they say they have great data. What they should say is that they generate great results. So what we started doing is to make sure that whenever we enrich data in a campaign, we put a pixel either from Facebook Atlas or from Nielsen um, that actually measures our data quality in terms of result delivery. So for example, if you look at um, demographic data, you can go with like Nielsen, Nielsen DAR, and the average benchmark from Nielsen in Europe, as an example, on mobile is 24 to 35% on target reach. That means of 100 impressions you want to reach, let's say males 24 to 34, the average on target rate is like 24 to 35%, which is not great, right? Our average campaign results measured by Nielsen are 87 to 92% actually, which means we more than double the on-target reach. Now, if you translate that qualitative KPI into a quantitative KPI, and you calculate the on-target CPM, which the client actually spent to reach 100% on-target users, our, the cost for using ZeroTap's data is significantly cheaper than not using any data or using probabilistic data. Because, because there's a lot of wastage cut out.